Hey friends, God bless you. It's Kevin here. Hey, I felt led to share a continuation of a message that I started earlier this week. The Lord's been giving me some progressive, I would say, download of what I believe are the instruction for such a time just today. And I shared a little bit when I was traveling for business this whole week and in transit at airport, I felt a little want me to release this word of entering into a season of Elisha unto the days of Noah. So this is will be like kind of like a part two of that, as well as for those recently, lately has been seen the number 33 or 333. I've been mean, specifically for me over this past week, I've been seeing the number 333 everywhere I go. Right, and on, on driving on clocks, uh, even when I check into my hotel room this week when I was traveling for business, my hotel room literally is three three three. I couldn't believe it, and I was I saw that number multiple times that same day and that night when I check in the hotel room. My hotel room number was 333. So I know the Lord was definitely trying to grab my attention and to pray into what He is speaking. And let me just make this disclaimer again here, right? I do not believe in new age or any type of numerology, astrology, anything of that nature. But the Lord does and can speak to us sovereignly to any means that he deems necessary, including numbers. So when the Lord give us number like 33 or 333, so we need to study what from the typology perspective, what the number three represent in the Bible biblically. And maybe you, you need to see as the Holy Spirit, maybe a particular verse and scripture that's he highlighting to you has to do with that, right? So the Lord definitely can sovereignly speak uh, speak to us through those means as, as necessary. And I just want to start off right, as I'm sharing this right now. I feel that what the Lord has given me to share and release. I want to start off with Luke 17, verse 26. Luke 17, verse verse 26 it says as it was in the days of noah so it will be also in the days of the sons of men they ate they drank they married wives they were given in marriage until that day the noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all completely wow what a statement so everything is alive as normal everything they feel like is peachy suddenly suddenly, boom, the flood came. And as you know what, the scripture says clearly, he, he he found favor before the Lord. The Lord scanned the earth, right? Just like Job, he was a righteous man. He found favor with the Lord and the Lord and gave him a message that, hey, repent, turn from the wicked way into the righteousness and back to the Jehovah God, right? And Noah preached and shared this message for over a hundred years. Because he took a took a hundred year, over a hundred years to build the ark. So think about that. Somebody has been preaching. Imagine that somebody has been preaching the gospel for a hundred years, and nobody listened to him. Very very few actually listened to Noah. He the warning and the prophetic message that the Lord has given to Noah to share with the people on earth that time. No, rarely anybody heeded it until that day. Boom, flood came. And destroy them all. And I feel like we really enter into that season of the last day like never before. And it's, it's, it, the Bible says, like, we must discern the signs of the time and the hour that which we're in. It's really important, like, like the sons of Issachar, to know the time and the season. And, and then I want to continue. Let's go to, uh, let's go to 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4. For God did not spare the angel who sinned. These are the watcher, right? That produced the Nephilim. This is way back. Say, God does not spare those angels, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into the chains of darkness. These are not Satan, his angel. There's a different set. There's two rebellion. There's two rebellion in heaven. This was the different one. And to be reserved in judgment. Verse 5. And did not spare the ancient world, but save Noah. One of the eight people, a preacher, look at it, preacher of righteousness. Guys, this is this is Apostle Peter. This is in the New Testament that's talking about this right now. Bringing in the flood on the world of the Angali and turning the city of Saddam and Gomorrah into ashes, condemning them to, to destruction, making them an example 
for those who afterward will live ungodly and deliver the righteous lot who was oppressed by the filthy conduct of the wicked. In verse 9, and the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation, right? Out of every trouble and preserve the unjust under the punishment of day to judgment. So for those who say, we're, we're, we're living in the age of grace and there's no judgment of the Lord. That's not true. Guys, that's Apostle Peter talking about in the New Testament, post-crucifixion, post-resurrection of Jesus Christ. The judgment of the Lord is still real in our, in our world today, in this round, and in our age and the age to come, both. Right? There's different degree of judgment that the Lord will render because he's righteous and he's just. He has never changed. He's the same God in the Old Testament as the same God in the New Testament. He's the same God. And I feel like there's a message, a divine solution, just like the, under the days of Noah. As we enter into the season of Elijah, of a double portion, of signs and great miracles, wonder, awakening, the harvest souls. And I feel that any time when this great darkness is, 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 re, is released onto the earth, you notice the Lord had a solution. Noah was building the ark for a hundred years plus, and he was preaching, a preacher of righteousness. He was preaching the gospel, essentially, right? And rarely anybody listened to him. But he never deviated from the assignment and the call of God. He was faithful from it over a hundred years. Guys, the, those are not symbolic hundred years. Those are literal hundred years. Imagine who of us will preach the message the Lord has given us for a hundred years and not com barely anybody come converted. Will we feel discouraged? I know in our culture today, many of us, preacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, all of us, a lot of us could be very, very discouraged and basically quit. Say, ah, this is not true. I, I, I'm walking away from this hogwash, right? But look at what Noah did. And I believe the Lord is raising up men and women with the spirit and anointing like Noah unto that double portion like Elijah taken from the former, right? From Elijah, he, he got double. You notice Elijah's miracle, he not only did same kind, same types of miracle, but he did it in double, double degree of power, double degree of volume, double degree of, of intensity, of testimony of the Lord. And I believe the Lord's raising up people like that right now on the earth. And you may be one of them. So this is important what I'm about to release, especially what I believe the Lord at least speaking to me about prophetically just over this past week about the number 33 three or 333, three three, especially for those who are seeing it, for those who are seeing the doubles, 33 three or 333. Three three, I believe this is a message of the Lord specifically for you, really for you. This is not for everyone. This is for you. And I'm going to go straight into Psalm 3.3. Three. Psalm 3.3, three, it says, But you, O Lord, but you, O Lord, are a shield, my glory, and the one who lifts my head. The Lord does want us to receive glory, but it's the glory from Him and will give glory to Him. Right? It is the glory of God. When glory of God, which means the favor and the righteousness of God come upon something, the Lord will lift them up for his purpose. Look at Daniel. Look at Joseph. Look at Esther. Look at Deborah. The Lord lift them up for a purpose for such a time as they lived in. Just like many of us right now in the name of Jesus. And if you look at Leviticus, I feel like this is an instruction for those being seen 3-3 or 333 lately. Leviticus 3-3. Then he, he shall offer a, the sacrifice of peace offering, an offering made by fire, which has been uh, represent holiness and purification to the Lord. The fat that covers entrails and all the fat that's on the entrail, meaning the best, the first fruit, right? The, the, the overflow. And I feel the Lord is giving instruction. It's so important that we draw near to him today. Be tentative. Any everything the Lord wants you to uh, sacrifice to make an offering unto him. Not just financially. It could be financially. Right. Uh, maybe the Lord wants you to give you uh, want you to give a first fruit offering to a particular uh, not just ministry, maybe a person. Right. Or anything that he wants you to offer in the sacrifice of a peace offering. So study the nature of what peace offerings are all about. It's about atonement. It's about wellness. It's about healing. It's about freedom. 
right, in the Old Testament. And I feel like the Lord's calling you to make those sacrifices, make those offering as a part of what he wants to do and release upon earth through you, for you, and in you. And Jeremiah 33, verse 3, 33, 3, 3, he said, Call unto me, I will answer you and show you in great and mighty things which you know not. And I've, I've been feeling this over the past month, just, just the Lord personally just speaking to me, dwelling in nearness, drawing close. When offense come, just come, people slander you, uh, uh, abuse you, prosecute you. Not only forgive them, but bless them. Share the love of God with them. How you can walk in the Matthew 5 reality is so important today. It's a way that we draw near to him so he can reveal things to us. Like Jeremiah 3.3 3 says, right? That call on to me, cry out to the Lord today, right? And he will answer and show you great many things which many of you have not yet seen. And I believe this is what's going to happen. What's going to happen is a reality of Proverbs verse 3, uh, chapter 3, verse 3. Proverbs 3, chapter 3. Verse 33, the curse of the Lord is upon the house of the wicked. The curse of the Lord is upon the cause of the wicked, house, house of the wicked. But he blesses, he blesses the home of the just. He blessed those righteous before him. Remember, it's not our own righteousness. It's a filthy rag, not worthy at all. But all, we all have sinned, fell short under the glory of God. But a righteous man falls seven times and gets back up again. So he will bless you for those who keep on pursuing him, getting back up, humbling yourself in repentance and truly seeking him. You, uh, you're going to see an um, unprecedented portion, right? Just like the Noah found favor in the Lord in his day. I see the Lord found favor for those who have been faithful. And the double portion of Elijah is coming to your household. And at the same time, I believe this is not only instruction for divine blessing the Lord want to release unto a lot of those who, you know, we shall receive a double portion from the Lord. It's also a warning. And this is the last verse I'm going to share. It's Exodus 33.3. Exodus chapter 33, verse 3. It says, go up to a land that flow with milk and honey, for I will not go up in your midst. Least that consume you on the way, for you are a stiff, naked people. Wow. So Kevin, what is what the, what is the Lord saying there? He said, go up. Yeah, I'll, I'll give you what you want it. Go up to the land of milk, honey. But this is not my way. This is not how I want you to do to get there. This is not the how. Yes, I want to bless you. I have given you promises. I want to fulfill. I want to release that miracle and breakthrough. But you got to do it my way. With my thoughts, not yours. You got to do it my way. My plan, my purpose, not yours. He said, I will not go in your midst. Even I let you. I will give it to you and I let you go. I will consume you by the way. Right? Because remember, the Lord is holy. The Lord just not love. Yes, love is the essence of who he is. But from that is a holiness. Holiness was what carried that presence of the living God. Holy there is that what manifests the dominions and power of the Lord. He said, for your stick naked of people, which tells you stubbornness. Rebellion, idolatry. Those are three key things. What stifle, hinder people when go into that uh, the glory on the, in the in, uh, partaking in the presence of the Lord to dwell with the Lord in nearness. So if, if that's you, this is a gentle warning from the Lord. Repent, humble yourself, forgive those who have offended you, who have done wrong, injustice against you. Forgive them, release them, bless them. Ask God. If he wants you to bless him, how he wants you to bless him. Or if you, you are the perpetrator, if you have offended somebody, if you've done wrong against somebody, make restitution. Just like Zacchaeus, when Jesus went to dinner at Zacchaeus' house, he's not, he didn't just repent, cry out for mercy and grace. You know what he did? It's not just verbal. He said, I will make restitution. Meaning everything I stole, I wasted, you know, did wickedness against, or I take advantage of people, I'm going to restore unto them fourfold. Right? Fourfold. Meaning these are physical acts of restitution. So ask the Lord if there's many restitution physically, naturally, the Lord wants you to do. And I, I'm, I beseech you, encourage you to walk in that obedience. I really feel this is a message from the Lord as the, as, as the time that we enter in. Right? We're just in the beginning of this new Hebrew year. But how, what, what, 
what experience we're gonna have with God? What how how He gonna manifest His life? It's a partnership, which also depend upon us partnering with a plan, with a purpose, with the sovereignty of what He wants to release by the Spirit of God. So let me just pray into this, and I hope this you would really share this because I feel this strongly by the Lord. This is a combination with the Lord's being downloaded with me over the past, you know, a few weeks, if not longer. And I feel like this is the time to release as we entering towards the end of 2023 and start beginning the 2024. So Father, I pray right now, let the word of the Lord run swiftly. And let you and you alone be lifted up, be exalted, be glorified. Father, that you release by your spirit, by your power and might to establish your ways, your promise, your plan. Release the angelic hosts of heaven, God, to ministering unto the air of salvation. Hearken unto your word where heaven and earth might pass away, but the word of the Lord shall never, ever, ever pass away. So we just declare from that place that you will release the expansion of kingdom in and through your people. The men and women that you raise up like Noah, that carry that double portion spirit, Elijah, break in and break through. Let them take their position position, take their place and start walking in the, their inheritance or in which you have ordained. Father, we just thank you for this and we bless you and lift you up in Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Beloved, I love you. Hope this will bless you. Please share this with others. I really feel this is something on the Father's heart right now and I will see you next time. Take care.